In order to support a nearly equal experience for all markdown interpreters you should stick with the basic markdown notation or use simple HTML tags as much as possible. For example if you want to change the color of a sentence or a word. However, LearScript allows you also to inject attributes into all markdown blocks and inline elements by attaching an HTML comment to that specific object. If the content of this HTML comment can be parsed as HTML attributes, then these settings will be applied to the element attached. The following resources will give you a full overview onto the most common HTML attributes and onto styling elements. It might be pretty overwhelming at first glance. What is possible, but you will see, that with some basic elements you can already achieve a lot. And when it comes to HTML and styling, you can find examples for pretty much everything on your preferred search engine, e.g. Ecosia. So what is actually a block in Lear script or Markdown? Basically it is everything that is separated by a new line, such as a paragraph, a table, a code block or a list. But it can also be a block of multiple blocks, such as a list, which may consist of different bullet points, where every bullet point can be a list of multiple blocks by itself. Settings for entire blocks can be set with a starting comment that includes all required HTML attributes and can even contain animation settings. This can also be used to highlight specific elements of your slides. Additionally, this method can be used to overwrite some aspects of all markdown element. The example shows how you can change the background color for a certain element. This comes quite handy, if you want to emphasize further some parts of your document. The following example depicts the interconnection of nested block elements for the entire table and also for all other blocks. It is possible to set the properties for width, font color and font size, which will be applied onto every cell. And every cell can overwrite these values simply by adding a style comment as the first element. These settings are even preserved if you reorder the table. There are some special internal formats for changing the appearance of code blocks and how to deal with tables. These topics will be handled separately. So what are inline elements? These are basically all the tiny parts, such as single words, bold text, links, inline code, but also images and videos. In contrast to blocks where you attach the comment onto front, Inline elements can be modified by attaching a comment to the end. That's it. As you can see from the results, the entire bold text is treated as one block, whereby in the second case only the single word text gets modified. CSS is a pretty powerful tool and by using HTML comments to tweak your markdown, you can still read the document with any ordinary markdown interpreter that simply ignores these comments. Styling images might happen quite often. However, you have to be aware of the fact that the modal view functionality is only possible if Lear script is in total control of the image. Thus, it will handle the optimal scaling for you and add a click event to switch to the modal view. Thus, if you click onto the first image, you will be able to inspect it in more detail. If you click onto the second image, then a map associated with this image is in charge of it, which handles click events differently. How does text highlighting Styling images might happen, thus, if you click on the following examples present some useful application of combining attribute injection into Lear script components. There might be use cases where you either want to show some parts only on GitHub and provide an alternative view at Lear script. As it was shortly introduced in the sections before, you can add comments to the start of every block to add additional attributes. These attributes can also be used as a trigger to hide or show content. The attributes within the comment will overwrite the attributes within the block. 
Thus, if there would be more stuff within style, this will be overwritten too. But other attributes like it that are not contained within the comment won't be affected. As you have seen previously, sizing videos and applying CSS filters is easy. However, there might also be the case that you want to start a video from some special points or to play it automatically when it appears. If the video is yours, then you can use the following attributes autoplay and muted to control the behavior and the additional fragment hash t equals 4, 12 attached to the URL of the video will tell the browser where to start and where to stop the video. The stop parameter should be optional. The resulting video starts immediately at second 4 and stops at second 10. And of course it will be muted. However, if you are referencing other resource on platforms such as YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion, PeerTube or TeacherTube you can achieve something similar, but in a slightly different way. These settings have to be added to the URL of your resource and different platforms might have different capabilities. In most cases, you can use something like an autoplay equals 1, unmuted equals true or unmute equals false as it is depicted below. But, different platforms support different functionalities. Here is a linked list of the different possible settings. For PeerTube and TeacherTube we could not find any settings so far.